travel with us down the highways, main streets, back roads, and trails to discover nature, history, and cultures that are unknown to many people. We will attend events and explore locations on a quest to help us better understand the Earth's natural collection of plants, animals, landscapes, and other features. Investigate the history of our Earth's geography and human activities. Look at the diversity of different cultures, including their knowledge, belief, arts, cultures, music, and other social habits. So join us as we learn more about our world. Today we're at Mount Moriah Cemetery in Bowling Green, Kentucky. To tell the tombstone tale, of Ernest Hogan, known as the father of ragtime music. He was born Ernest Reuben Crowdis in the African-American Shake Rag District in Bowling Green, Kentucky in 1865. Not much is known about Hogan's early life, but by his early teen years he was supporting himself as an actor, singer, dancer, and comedian, touring with Traveling Tom shows. I planned on telling the story of Ernest Hogan at his graveside but while doing my research, I found that he apparently is buried in an unmarked grave here at Mount Moriah Cemetery. But I thought with somebody being as famous as he was, known as the father of ragtime, somebody surely would have put up a monument over the years. Upon my arrival here this morning at Mount Moriah Cemetery, I spent about an hour and a half walking the grounds. And I could not find anything with Ernest Hogan's name on it or even another tombstone with his surname Acrautis on it in the cemetery. By his mid-teens, Hogan was working with travel and shows like Richard and Pringle's George of Minstrels, where he created a comedy dance step called Paul Mala. In 1891, Ernest changed his last name to Hogan because at that time, most of the successful comedians were all Irish. In 1895, Hogan released his first song, The Palma La, based on his comic dance step he had developed some years earlier. The next year he released his hit song, All Coons Look Alike to Me. It sold well over a million copies, it made Hogan famous, and it paid him very well. But he also, throughout his life, regretted that song because of the racial prejudice and stereotypes that it portrayed. In 1897, with Hogan becoming one of the most successful African-American entertainers at that time, he took the job of Master of Ceremonies at Black Patty's Troubadours. He was a comedy star, wrote some of the music, and all the comedy routines. Also during that summer, he divorced his wife of five years, Lillian Todd Hunter Hogan, who was a Caucasian daughter of a wealthy California rancher. In 1898, Hogan played the leading part in the musical Clorindy, or The Origin of the Cakewalk, which was the first African-American musical to play on Broadway. After touring Australia and Hawaii, Hogan returned in 1900 to marry Maddie Wilkes, a young actress-singer who performed with him in the musical The Missionary Man. Hogan partnered with Billy McLean in 1901 to create a very successful road show producing the comedy musical Southern Enchantment in 1902. With his wife Louise, Hogan helped organize a group of men and women, singers, dancers, and musicians to form the Memphis Student Orchestra in 1905. The orchestra went on to play 100 shows at the Hammerstein Victoria Theater on Broadway before touring Europe. Also in 1905, Hogan starred in the musical comedy Rufus Rastus, for which he wrote the script and co-wrote the music. Rufus Rastis toured for two years after its New York run. Ernest Hogan prepared and performed in his final musical in 1907 with the Oyster Man. During the run of that play, he became ill with tuberculosis, even collapsing on stage. In 1909, he succumbed to tuberculosis, dying in Lakewood, New Jersey. His body was returned here to his hometown in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and was laid to rest in an unmarked grave here at Mount Moriah Cemetery.